whether it's a product for home or business, farm or factory, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. Massachusetts in the winter of 1864, a family named March was living in a small New England home on the outskirts of town. The father of the family was serving as chaplain with the Union armies, leaving a family of five women to hold his parish together during the difficult war years. One was his wife, the other four were the little women. another carol but Joe it's Christmas Christmas isn't Christmas without any presents it's better for us to forget it it's dreadful to be poor I had to cut up an old petticoat to make the sachet why do some girls have plenty of everything and others nothing it's not fair we have mother and father we haven't got father at all and I can tell you at school no one cares whether he's fighting with the Union Army or not they just know he hasn't got enough money to give us nice things to wear and they go around saying he's a complete failure it's an absolute label <laughs> Libel, Amy, not label. You make Papa sound like a pickle bottle. You know what I mean. And you needn't be satirical about it either. Don't be such a little brat. Joe, you use slang all the time lately. Anyone would think you were a boy. I wish I were. I hate being ladylike and polite. Who wants to dress up in long gowns and look like a china aster? I do. No, I don't. Stop it, both of you. I land. Are you young ones still sitting around? It's time to set the table. We'll be in in a minute, Anna. We're waiting for Mommy. Oh, she gets later every night. I just hope she doesn't forget to bring the things from the market, or there'll be no Christmas dinner. Mommy's trying to hold Papa's parish together, Hannah, and you know it. If she's late once in a while, she has a perfect right to be. Perhaps, but it doesn't make it any easier to feed a family this size. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. One of these days, I'm going to write a Greek tragedy, and Hannah could be the whole chorus. It <laughs> just seems terrible that we can't do any more for Mother than this. One measly little bottle of perfume. It's humiliating having a relative as rich as Aunt March, and not even dare ask for enough to make Christmas mean something. I did ask her. Meg, you did. What did she say? Nothing. She wasn't at home, so I left a note. When? This morning. Obviously, she doesn't intend to give us anything, or she'd have been here by now. Stop peeking, Amy. It's bad manners. Why won't you ever let anyone see what you're doing? I might when I'm through. Hasn't it even got a title yet? I'm calling it The Witch's Curse. It's a novel, but I think I'm going to turn it into a play. And we can let Aunt March play the witch. She gets boiled in hot oil at the end. <laughs> oh, good. Can you finish it before... <laughs> what is it? Meg. What are you looking at? What? Why, Meg March, I do believe you were staring at that man across the way. Meg, you were. Of course I wasn't. I was just looking at the snow. Truly, truly hope to die? Because that's the third time I've caught you at the window today. Who in the world were you looking at? I know, I know. His name's Brooke, and he's just arrived with old Mr. Lawrence's grandson for Christmas. The one who's been living abroad? Well, he hasn't been very well. That's why he's having to tutor. 
He wants to get into Harvard next year. And the tutor is very, very handsome, isn't he, Meg? How should I know? I've never even spoken to him. Who could that be at this hour? I'll bet it's Mr. Brooke coming to call. Oh, oh baby. baby. Is that your mother at last? Oh. Close the door, child. You want to have snowdrifts all over the hall? Good evening, ma'am. They're all in the parlor. Well, good, good evening, evening, Aunt March. March. Right by the fire. Sit here, Aunt March. I won't stay a minute or my carriage will be snowed down there. Where's your mother? She hasn't come home yet, Aunt March. Your mother's a very silly woman. She's just exhausting herself, and what does she hope to get out of it? She's not thinking of getting anything. Rubbish. No one does anything for nothing. She's probably worried about her immortal soul. Well, if she catches her death a cold tramping over the countryside, she's no one to blame but herself. What? That's a... Will you have some tea, Aunt March? Thank you, no. You came to see me this morning. Yes, Aunt March. And you left a note. Yes, I did. And you want me to lend you some money. Why? Come on, speak up. I haven't all night. Well, it's just that... Oh, Aunt March, we all feel so bad that we haven't enough to buy Mommy anything really nice for Christmas. And you were hoping I'd be generous enough to advance you a little. Only a little? Only a little. Can't be much of a Christmas for with Father at war. I was against your father's dashing off like that from the start. Trying to be a soldier at his age. It's the silliest thing I ever heard of. It's not silly. When Father found he was too old to be a plain soldier, he made them take him as a chaplain. And I think it was wonderful of him. So do I. Who asked your opinion? Your father's been impractical all his life. He lost his money because he wouldn't listen to me. And now that you find Christmas isn't going to be frivolous enough to suit you, you come to me to help you out. Well, you won't get a penny out of me. Not a penny. I detest beggars. So do we, Aunt Mara. We'll do without, thank you. Oh, straighten your hair, miss. You look as if you'd been pulled through a hedge. Christmas present. Hello? Oh, oh Arnie! Oh, I'm sorry oh, to be so late. Did you bring a Christmas dinner? Why, Aunt March, what a pleasant surprise. Is it indeed? <laughs> I hope you'll forgive me for not being at home. There are so many poor people who need help this year. Yes, I know all about that fiddle faddle. Oh, well, will you stay and have some supper with us? Thank you, no. I don't appreciate favors from those who only want to get something in return. Good evening. Well, she seems terribly angry about something. Whatever happened? She started saying awful things about Father. I lost my temper, I guess. Oh, sure. I was as much to blame as Joe, Marmy, perhaps more. Marmy, was it a frightful day? <sighs> it was tiring. But I'm afraid I've done something rather cruel. To... I've given away our entire Christmas dinner, two chickens and all the sweet potatoes. Looks as though we're going to have to get along with eggs. Oh, not eggs. Don't be selfish, Amy. <laughs> we'll live, I'm sure. But, oh, dear, wait till you have to face Hannah. She's been pacing the floor for the past two hours. <laughs> I'll try to break the news as gently as possible. I've got some news to break myself. <gasps> oh, yeah. Hannah! Where did you get that turkey, Hannah? Hannah, you stole it. I did not. It was Mr. Lawrence next door. Send it in with his compliments. Mr. Lawrence, oh, that was thoughtful of him, and we scarcely know him. Hannah will have to start cooking it right away. Mm. Yes, ma'am. That means I'll be up half the night basting it. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, can we have crap? Yes. That was nice of him. We'll have to write a letter and all sign it. But why? Wouldn't it be better to thank Mr. Lawrence in person? You might even get a chance to see your Mr. Brooke that way. Oh, but I've never met him. But that's silly. You can't just sit back and wait, you know. I couldn't do that. Just walk in with no excuse whatever. It's so obvious. I couldn't do that. Well, I could. Joe, where are you going? I'm going next door and thank Mr. Lawrence for the turkey he sent us. And it'll take me just as long to do it as it'll take me to meet Mr. Brooke. I must say, I admire your taste. I, uh, I was merely looking to see how, how deep the snow was getting. And the snow was pale with raven locks. You spent a very short time on that German translation. If you hope to get into Harvard by next fall, you'll have to work a great deal harder than you have so far. <laughs> oh, I'll go. Never mind, Stevens, I'll take it. Hello, I'm Miss March from next door. May I come in? You certainly may. Here, let me take your show. Oh, it's a terrible night out. But I did want to see your grandfather and thank him for the turkey he sent us. Well, uh, come in, sit down, and tell him you're here. Thank you. Well, this is my tutor, Mr. John Brooke, Miss March. How do you do, Miss March? How do you do? 
I feel almost as though I knew you. I've seen you so many times from that window there. Oh, Mr. Brooke is very fond of the view from that window. Really? My sister Meg is, too. Is Meg the one with the black hair? Yes, but please don't say anything. She wouldn't be thought forward for the world. Please, please tell her she did not appear forward in the least. Oh, so you've been watching her, too, then, Mr. Brooke? I know it, it was quite accidental. But you wish to see Mr. Lawrence, I believe. I'll tell him you're here. Forgive me. <laughs> He's shy, isn't he? <laughs> and you're not. Not a bit. Nor am I. You didn't tell me your name. Josephine. <laughs> oh, I know. I feel the same way about it. I make everyone call me Joe. My name's Theodore, but I make everybody call me Laurie. Oh, I like that much better. Isn't it silly that you've lived right next door all this time we've never even met? Well, I only visited here once when I was about five. I don't remember much about it. You're very lucky to live in such a lovely home with all these books around. I like to curl up in front of that fire for a whole year and read every one of them. Why don't you? Nobody else ever touches them. Goodness, you've even got a ladder to get up to the high ones. <laughs> Would you like to climb up, see what you find? May I? Of course. Oh, they're really beautiful. I love the smell of leather bindings. Do you like books? Yes. I even hope to write one someday. You ever tried? Oh, all the time. I'm an awful nuisance to have around the house. You better stay on the right side of Grandpa, then. He'd never let one of them out, but he might let you in. Oh, that would be like heaven. That's a portrait of him, of him isn't it? Yes. Do you like it? Well, he isn't as handsome as my grandfather. He reminds me of a, of a rather frightening old battle charger. Oh, but I wouldn't be frightened of him. You wouldn't, eh, miss? Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. So you're not afraid of me, huh? No, not much, sir. And you don't think me as handsome as your grandfather? No, not quite, sir. But you've got my grandfather's spirit if you haven't his face. <clears throat> I see you've inherited some of that spirit. I came to thank you for your generous gift, sir. I doubt if you could know how much it means to all of us. Not at all, Miss March. I see you have one of my books there. May I ask your choice? Oh, it, it's Boswell's Life of Johnson. Perhaps you'd care to borrow it. Oh, that would be very kind of you. I'll take the greatest care of it. And now, now I think I should be going. It must be getting close to your dinner hour. Miss March, I'm giving a small party for Theodore on New Year's Eve. I should be more than gratified if you and your sister will give us the pleasure of your company. Oh. You mean Meg and me? Oh, how simply... Oh, thank you very much, sir. We'd be delighted. In that case, I shall send a note to your mother. Thank you, sir. Oh, I, I shall convey your kind invitation, sir. <laughs> thank you, Grandpa. Get your lessons, boy. I expect Mr. Brooke to exercise considerably more discipline from now on. In the kitchen with Marmee, they're getting supper ready. I had the most wonderful news. What? Mr. Lawrence has asked us to a New Year's Eve ball. A ball? Hooray! Oh, we didn't ask you, silly. Just Meg and me. Oh, that isn't fair. Why didn't he ask me? We are too young. I am not. Don't be ridiculous, Amy. Marmee would never even think of letting you stay out that late. And you didn't even ask him to ask me, did you? Of course I didn't. You're just a baby. I am not. Marmee. Meg and Joe have been invited to a big party at the Lawrence's, and they haven't asked me. Is this true, Joe? Yes, Mommy. Mr. Lawrence is sending you a note. Oh, I am glad for both of you. I shall wear my best silk with a lovely lace around the neck. Oh, Marmy, it isn't going to be a dismal Christmas at all now. He's going to be just so... Oh, Joe, dear, be careful. How many times must I tell you you cannot sit on a hot stove? It just feels so good until it's too late. Someday you're going to burn a hole right through your dress. Oh, Mommy, I'd never do that. <laughs> I still wish I could go. Welcome. But are you alone? I expected your sister to be with you. Well, she asked me to apologize for her, sir. She's She's been delayed, but she'll be along shortly. Well, I hope so. But now, allow me to introduce my grandson, Theodore. Miss March, Mr. Long. Hello. How do you do? 
Excuse uh, me. Grandpa. Nothing serious has happened to Joe, has it? Well, it was rather serious for a while, but she'll be along later, I trust. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Won't you come in? There's someone here who's been most anxious to meet you. Miss March, Mr. John Brooke. How do you do, Miss March? How do you do, Mr. Brooke? Well, if you'll forgive me, I have to attend to my other guests. It's, it's a very great pleasure to meet you, Miss March. It's a very great pleasure to meet you too, Mr. Brooke. You are even more lovely close to than from a distance. Thank you. I hadn't meant to admit that I'd seen you from across the garden, but I've been trapped now, so I may as well confess. I've seen you too, Mr. Brooke. It's rather like meeting an old friend, isn't it? Yes. Then, then may I have the honor of the first dance? Way, little dear. <gasps> Joe, I just don't know how we're ever going to cover it up. Anyone who is so stupid as to sit in a hot stove doesn't deserve to go to a party. You'd better give it up, Mommy. You've done enough. I should say not. If you haven't gumption enough to do something about it, I have. I could let my hair down in the back to cover it. It's the only good feature I've got. <laughs> Where did you learn to dance so well, Miss March? I've taught dancing ever since my father went into the army. It brings in very little, but it helps. May I enroll as one of your pupils? You're laughing at me, Mr. Brew. Indeed, I'm not. I find it far too pleasant just talking to you. Yes, I did, but I was wounded and sent home. Oh, I see. Will you have to go back? No, I've been discharged. Not too dishonorably, I hope. I'm trying to earn enough money so that I can go into business for myself. Where, New York? I had expected to until recently. Are you... You've changed your mind? Yes, I'd like to stay here now, if I may. Oh, money's such a problem, isn't it? I used to think so. But lately I found that there are many things that you can have without being rich. Yes, there are many things. We have almost no money at all now. But with all the pinching and scraping, we're, we're quite happy, really. I've noticed that you are. You should spy, Mr. Brooke. It's not good manners. You must forgive me for my interest, Miss Margaret. I forgive you. Shouldn't we join the others? Why, aren't you happy here? Oh, yes, I am. Very happy. But for appearance's sake. Very well. For appearance's sake. Mrs. March, not a thing. Oh, dear. I can't help being anxious. This is the third week since we've had a letter of any kind. Now, ma'am, you know it's not easy to write when you're as busy as he is. Yes. I suppose you're right. Is Meg home? Not yet. She's out again with that Mr. Brooke. It's been every day the last two weeks. <laughs> you sound as if you'd heard to people talking, Hannah. Talking? Huh? Think you'd hear them buzzing all over town? I know there has been some talk. Mr. Brooks seems very much of a gentleman. I don't believe he'd do anything to encourage real gossip. Hmm. I'm not worrying about him. It's Meg. <laughs> She's been walking about in a dream all week. She wants to get married, Hannah. And when a child's as anxious for anything as she is for that, she's apt to get what she wants. I know. And she can spend the rest of her life regretting it. That's what I've done. I think I told you. Pay me a penny, please. You cheated. You started when I wasn't looking. Oh, don't be a poor sport. Hello, Mommy. Hello, darling. Laurie and I have been skating. Oh, she's too oh. good for me, Mrs. March. Too much for you, Laurie. Not too good. <laughs> I accept the correction. <laughs> Very well, but you haven't paid me yet. One penny. Oh, here. <laughs> Will you stay to tea, Laurie? I was hoping you'd invite me. Well, if you do, you have to work for it. This is no rich, lazy man's house. 
Come on, you can help make pieces. You can help make toast. Anna will probably throw me right out of the kitchen. <laughs> well, have you two been out all this time? We took a drive around Ten Acre Farm. The snow's two feet deep over there. Uh, do come in, Mr. Brooke. Joe Lowry just going to help me make some tea. Why can't we help, Mrs. Marsh? No, Anna can't stand a lot of people in the kitchen. We won't be a minute. I wonder if your mother approves of me. I'm never quite sure. How could she help it? Of course, she must be careful of what people might say with father away. Why, I thought our behavior had been above reproach. Oh, it has only... Only what? I fear if we're seen driving together every day, people will talk. Let them. I see nothing to hide. Meg. No, John. Not yet. We mustn't. I could wait a lifetime if I could hear you say just... Oh, I do. John, you know I do. Oh, Meg, will you go to the door, please, dear? Lowry, just put the tray of uh, tea if the thing's here, if you will, please, right. right on this table. Thank you, dear. What is it, Meg? Mommy, it's a telegram for you from Washington. Mommy, what's the matter? Your father has been seriously wounded. He's ill in a hospital oh, no. in Washington. Mommy, what can we do? I don't know. I'll just have to get on a train for Washington tonight. Can you afford it? It's terribly expensive, isn't it? Yes, we'll just have to try to borrow from Aunt March. Run over along over there, Joe, and see what you can do, will you? Uh, how much will you need? Oh, forty dollars, I should think. A little more, if you can spare it. All right, I'll try. I know she'll never do it. I'll come with you. No, I, I just shouldn't go alone. Thanks, just the same one. You'll excuse me. I think I'll go up and start. Meg. Meg, your mother shouldn't travel alone. The trains are bad now, I know. What can we do? I think someone should go with her. Do you think Mr. Lawrence would let you go, John? We ought to ask him at least. Well, come on, then. We'll both talk to you. Well, do what you can, please. Thank you, so much for nearly ready. Yes, her, her, her trunks went to the train a half hour ago. She'll be down in a moment. Oh, John, I hate having you go, but I'm ever so proud of you for doing it. I hate having to go, but your mother will need me. Don't stay any longer than you have to. I won't. I'm trying to carry that bag alone, dear. It's much too heavy for anybody to be here. About Joe, I can't understand her not being here to say goodbye. Why hasn't she gotten back yet from Aunt March's? Yes, she gave me twenty-five dollars, and then suddenly she just disappeared again. Well, I don't think we should wait, Mrs. March. We've not too much time. Yes, I suppose you're right. right. I'll take the things to the sleigh oh, while you say goodbye. Oh, mommy, Joe, I'm so afraid you're gone. Here's twenty-five dollars more. It may help to buy some things for father. Joe, twenty-five. Where did you get all this money? Joe, you're here. Oh, Joe. Joe, what have you done? I sold it. Oh, it's all right, Mommy. It'll go back again. Oh, Joe, I know what it meant to you. I know. Oh, no. I like it this way. It's awful silly for a gangly thing like me to have a head of hair like that. We really should be going, Mrs. March. Y yes, of course. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Goodbye Mommy. 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 Take care. Mommy. Will you write? Every day. you've seen part one of Little Women, let's turn to our Westinghouse program. Want your picture giant size? Well, if it's a picture of Betty Furness, I'm sure we'd all like a real big one. If you have a small screen set, I'm sure you'd like a bigger picture of everything you see on television. Now, you've heard a lot about giant sized pictures, and I'm going to show you one that really fits that description. A picture so big and fine and clear that, well, the only word for it is spectacular. Westinghouse Television brings it to you on a 20-inch screen with 215 square inches of viewing space. 
Now, you'll be amazed at how much more you enjoy watching television on this enormous screen. And here's the beautiful new Westinghouse television set that brings you this wonderfully big new screen. Notice how exquisitely the twin mahogany doors are matched. Now, here's what I mean when I say giant size. Look, there's the size of your screen if it's 10 inches. <laughs> now, that's quite a difference, isn't it? And look, here's the number of dials that you get with most television sets. But with this glorious new set, you get Westinghouse single dial tuning. And that means that you just give this dial a single turn like that, and you're tuned in perfectly. And because of Westinghouse synchro tuning, sound and picture come in locked together, and they stay locked in tune. The picture never wavers like this, and the sound never goes off like this. What's more, this Westinghouse set, like all new Westinghouse television sets, has more tubes, more circuits, and more power. Now, that means that when an airplane is flying overhead or someone in the neighborhood is using an electrical gadget, there's none of this. New Westinghouse television improvements literally sweep interference right out of the air. What a perfect gift this makes for the whole family. What pride and ownership this truly distinguished television set will bring you all. Yes, and it will bring you more enjoyment, worlds more pleasure through the years. Remember, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. And now let's return to Westinghouse Studio One and Little Women. It's been a long month away from you all. But now that Father is on the men, perhaps the days will move more swiftly. My only worry is that you may be working too hard. Please don't go beyond your strength, any of you. You particularly, Beth. I know how tiring it is to visit all those poor people every day. You do look tired today, Beth. Oh, I am a little. Not too. You'd better take a day off tomorrow. Oh, I can't. There are so many children sick this winter. The Parker baby has pneumonia, and the Hummel child came down yesterday with a terrible throat. It's like that everywhere. Go ahead. I want to hear the rest of the letter. Uh, oh. I don't know what I would have done without that nice Mr. Brooke to help me out. We speak of you often, Meg, and I know he's anxious to get back to see you again. Anyone would think he was really in love with you. Do go on with the letter, Joe. My only wish is that one of you could be here with us. We miss you more than you will ever know. That's all. Rather lonely, isn't it? Yes, it is. You know what I think? I think one of us should go down there to be with her. How can we, Joe? We haven't the money. Oh, anything you want, enough you always get. The only question is which one of us should go. Well, Meg is the oldest. Do you want to go, Meg? Oh, yes. I mean, I'd be quite willing to go. Well, that much is settled then. Now all we have to worry about is where to get the money. Aunt March has been almost human lately. We might try asking her. We now might see here. Do you know what time it is? It's after six, and I haven't one thing in the house for us to eat. <laughs> Don't get yourself in such a temper, Hannah. I'm waiting for Laurie. He promised to take me to town in his sleigh. Huh. That's scatterbrain boy. It's like as not he's gone off somewhere and forgotten all about you. Hannah, how could anyone forget a promise to me? When you live longer, you'll find out that's the easiest thing a man does. Oh, <laughs> sorry I'm late. Ready to start? You see, Hannah, you should apologize to Mr. Lawrence. Huh? What's Hannah done now? She disbelieved you. I don't really blame her. I've got to get my hat and collar. Won't be two shakes. I, uh, I think I'd like a cup of tea. You'll excuse me, won't you, Laurie? Uh, of course, Beth. Does she know? No, and neither does Joe. And you mustn't let her know, Laurie. Trust me. I like keeping things from Joe. She thinks she knows everything. Nice fat one today. Now hide it till Joe and I've gone. I will. Shh. I'm ready! Come on, then. Sleigh bells are ringing. Tra -la 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 -la. Another letter, isn't it, to me? How did you know? I saw Laurie bring you one last week. Meg. Is it wise to do anything so secretly? Wouldn't it be better if you wrote Mommy and Father and told them? I might. But I couldn't let Joe know. 
She'd think it was disloyal of me for thinking of anything but our staying together. She never even guessed you wanted to go to Washington to see Mr. Brooke, did she? No, she didn't. If... Oh, hello, Hi, Hi, Marge. It's good to see you. Won't you come in? Well, I must say you children have done a lot better than I expected. Well, thank you, Aunt Marge. Would you like a cup of tea? It's still quite warm. Thank you. I understand you and Joe have been earning enough money to keep the family going. Very little, but it's been enough. I like your spirit. It's the first thing I've heard about this family in years that I did like. Cream, Aunt Marge? Thank you. Have you heard from your mother recently? Yes, today. It was a rather lonely letter. Mm -hmm. I think it might do her good if, if Meg could go and be with her. Indeed. And have you any idea how you'd pay for a trip like that? I do hope you hadn't thought of borrowing outside the family. Oh, no. Then you must have thought of coming to me. Oh, no, Aunt March, you've done enough already. Oh, fiddlesticks, I've done very little and you know it. On the other hand, I'm in a perfectly good position to do anything I choose. Question is, do I choose? Do you? My tea is not hot. Oh, isn't it? I'll get you some fresh. Amy, what is it? Amy, darling, what is it? Nothing. Nonsense. Something's happened. What is it, Amy? I've been expelled. Expelled? Oh, Amy, no. What did oh. you do? I couldn't help it. Honestly, I couldn't. You must have something better than that to say for yourself, young lady. Oh, please, Aunt Marsh, just let her tell us in her own way. Now, Amy. Please, darling. Well, I, it, it wasn't anything, really. I... I just took a bag of pickled limes into math class. You couldn't be expelled for that. Well, it wasn't just the limes. It was the smell. They were bad. Amy, there must have been something else. Well, Miss Chisholm tried to make me tell where I got the limes, and I wouldn't. It was a secret. Were you rude to her? No, I wasn't rude. I just wouldn't say anything. And then she got into a fury and wanted to beat me. So I threw the limes at her and ran out. That's enough. That's all I want to hear. If that's all the gratitude you're willing to show for good money that's spent on you, you deserve to do without. Oh, please, I, I am quite deaf to any further pleadings from any of you. I am going now. I hope your mother will be sent for soon to come home and take care of you, since it's obvious you're incapable of taking care of yourselves. Good afternoon. Well, there goes my trip to Washington. What trip? Meg was going down to help Marmy. We were trying to get the money from Aunt March. Oh, no. And I spoiled it for you. I'm sorry, Meg. It doesn't matter. She probably wouldn't have given it to me anyway. <laughs> Come on, Amy. You and I will go upstairs and start getting ready for supper. We'll both feel better, I think. I'm sorry, Meg. Truly, I am. I know you are, darling. Dear Meg, it's been three, three days. days since I've heard from you. But I know how difficult it is for you to write. And I'm sure that using Laurie as an intermediary is far from satisfactory. I only hope the day will soon come when you will no longer feel this subterfuge is necessary. Why, Meg, you're getting reckless. Laurie. What if somebody else had come in then? What brought you back so soon? Joe left Hannah's list on the table. She's down trying to keep the store open while I pick it up. She's thoroughly scatterbrained. Oh, here it is. Laurie. Yes? Do you think your grandfather could ask Mr. Brooke back from Washington, even for a few days? Well, I thought you were going to Washington. Well, I was, but Aunt March won't lend us the money, and I don't see how I can go now. Do you want me to ask Grandpa? No. No, it's silly. I, I don't know what made me ask you. I'll speak to him tonight. No, Laurie, I'm ashamed of myself for asking it. Laurie, I don't want you to. I'll make some excuse. I'm good at that. No. Go on. Go on. Well, sir, uh, that's it, really. It just sounds as though John's usefulness in Washington were about over. Fiddlesticks! I believe there's some ulterior motive behind you wanting me to get Mr. Brooke back here. Did Miss Josephine March put you up to this by any chance? No, sir. I'm not so sure. You were with her quite some time this afternoon. Next time, tell her to make a request to me in person. Joe had nothing to do with it, sir. I give you my word. She was down in the store when I... When you what? 
I can't answer that, sir. Why not? I gave my word. Good. That answers everything. I should never have suspected either one of them of any such conduct. But if you've been sworn to secrecy, I expect this thing has gone a lot farther than it should have. Hello? I hope I haven't come at a bad time. Come in, young lady. I return the books I borrowed, Mr. Lawrence. You've Lawrence. arrived at a very opportune moment. Oh, dear, something has happened, I can tell. Have I done something very bad? I don't know, young lady, but Laurie seems so anxious to protect you, I suspect you're quite as deeply involved as anyone. I am? <laughs> what dreadful thing have we done now? We took his sleigh this afternoon, was it that? I knew all about that. What I don't know is why you should be so anxious for me to recall Mr. Brooke from Washington. Recall Mr. Brooke? It happens the young man is doing some rather important work for me there. Now then, why have you put Laurie up to this? I have no idea what you're talking about, Mr. Lawrence. Then it's high time you did, because someone in your family has put this rattlebrain boy up to it, and I intend to know why. Laurie, is this true? I have nothing to say. Very well, sir. If you won't tell what you know, I'll tell what I suspect. I suspect, Miss March, that one of your sisters has been corresponding with Mr. Brooke. I suspect that she's interested in involving him in some ill-advised romantic fiddle-faddle. Well, I'll have you know, Miss March, that I consider it thoroughly reprehensible of you to attempt to involve me in any such juvenile claptrap, and I will not be a party to it. Indeed, I agree with you, sir. And were it true, I'd say you had every right to be as angry as you are. But there's not one word of truth in it. And if you dare to imply anything like this to your grandfather, it's malicious and false. And I never want to see you again. Very well, then. But before you turn on me like this, I suggest you just go back and ask your sister if indeed it is false. Just ask her. What sister, Mr. Lawrence? Meg. How dare you? Don't you think I know my sister better than anyone else in the world? But we've shared every secret ever since we were that high. I don't know what goaded you to create this mischief. But whether it's amusing to you or not, it's beneath contempt to me. There are your books, sir. I won't inconvenience you by asking further favors of this house. I'll never do anything for a woman again as long as I live. Sit down, young man. I want to talk to you. I do hope Joe will hurry. When she gets started talking to old Mr. Lawrence, she had loses all track of time. I'm cold. Beth, aren't you well? Well, I don't know what it is. I've, I've had a chill all evening and my throat's begun to hurt. I suppose I'll feel better after a night's sleep. Your head is hot. You'd better stay in bed tomorrow. Hello, Joe. Deceitful, malicious little creature. I'm to wring his neck. Ooh. Laurie, do you know what he had the impudence to do? He tried to make the old man believe that you were in love with John Brooke and wanted Mr. Lawrence to bring him back from Washington. What did you say? Well, I told him he was a cheap, malicious little liar and I never wanted to see him again. I don't know what I said to Mr. Lawrence. I was in such a fury by that time, I might have said almost anything. I wish you hadn't. Oh, I do wish you hadn't. Well, why not? They deserved every bit of it, didn't they? That's the trouble. They didn't deserve it. What do you mean, Meg? It's the truth. I, I even asked Lori to ask him. Meg, you're not serious. You're not in love with John Brooke. I don't know. We only knew each other for two weeks. We've written every day since he's been gone. You've done this all this while, and you never told me. I don't believe you. I didn't dare tell you, Joan. You kept saying nothing should, should break up the family, that we should all stay together. I, I didn't dare tell you. You kept this a secret from me. Oh, Meg. I don't understand. I, I trusted you. I believed you. Oh, I don't know. You've never been in love. I've loved you. That's different. Well, then I hope I never find anything out about it. From now on, I'm just going to be me. Oh, what a fool I've made myself. What a fool. Don't, Joe. Don't. Well, I can't let Lloyd be punished any longer for something he hasn't done. I'd better face it now, I guess. It'd only get worse the longer I wait. Hey. What is it, Beth? I, I wonder if you get me a bed warmer. I'm so terribly cold. Of course, darling, I'll get it right away. Thanks, Meg. Uh, 
by one and you will discover what the Lord has done. Heavenly Come. day, are you still hanging around this house? I thought you'd be out playing. I don't feel like it. I've been thinking. Rich girls in school do much worse than I did and they never get expelled. Sometimes they don't even get punished. I'm just not going to be poor anymore, not if I can help it. Mm. And how are you going to manage that, miss? Aunt March isn't poor, is she? And she's got no one to spend her money on at all. I don't think it would be too hard to make Aunt March like me. I don't think it would be too hard at all. You impertinent young minx. If I catch you talking like that again, well, just let me catch you. <laughs> Hello. Am I the first one home? Yes, Joe's been out all afternoon. I'd better go up and see how Beth is. Oh, well, she's gone out too. Oh, you shouldn't have let her, Hannah. She wasn't well. Try and stop her. Someone called here about three o'clock. Seems the Hummel child's next to dying. And before I knew it, Beth was up and out of here. Nothing was going to stop her. Oh, she shouldn't have done it. She never thinks of herself. Hannah, you better have hot tea ready and some extra hot water. All right, I will. Hello. Hello. Meg, let's not fight again. Not ever. Not ever. I was so ashamed all day. Oh, so was I. I was just over to talking to Mr. Lawrence. You know, he's rather a nice old thing. He stopped being gruff after a while, and he even got quite human. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he asked Mr. Brooke to come back pretty soon. Truly? It does mean a lot to you, doesn't it? Yes. I guess it does. I wish I knew what you two were talking about. <sighs> Beth, is something wrong? Beth, you shouldn't have gone out to enough well. I had to. They came to tell me the baby was worse. I got there as fast as I could, but I couldn't do anything. It died in my arms. Oh, you poor darling. Come and sit down. Yep. I knew it the minute I got there. I told him to go for the doctor right away, and, and then I picked the child up and held it in my arms. It went cold right in my arms. Beth, you're shivering. It's my throat. Do they know what the baby has? Scarlet fever. Oh, Beth, and you've been with that baby every day for two weeks. You never had scarlet fever. I know. When the doctor came, he told me to go home and take Belladonna right away. Well, you have a fever. Oh, if Mommy were only here. You've got to get to bed at once, Beth. Come, we'll take you upstairs. Amy, you tell Hannah to get Dr. Bangs right away. Oh, and Amy, you've never had scarlet fever. No. Pack your things and go to Aunt March's, and you stay there till this is over. Oh, good. <laughs> I just heard about Beth. I came over to see if there's anything I can do. Thank you, Laurie. We don't know yet. Joe will be down with Dr. Banks in just a minute. Do you He'll want... tell us then. Do you want me to stay? Or had you rather I did? Oh, no, Laurie, please stay. Joe will be grateful to you for coming. Oh, Dr. Banks. Hello, Laurie. Hello, Joe. It's serious, Meg. Scarlet fever always is. She's delirious and her fever is very high. Oh, is Hannah with her? Yes. What can we do, Doctor? There's very little you can do. Keep the ice packs going. Keep her as comfortable as you can. Isn't there anything else? Yes, one thing. Send for your mother. That's a very sick girl up there. I think you should telegraph for your mother tonight. But I've got another call to make. I'll be back in about an hour. Thank you, Doctor. What should we do? Send for mother, of course. But who'll stay with father? John, there's no one else. Oh, Laurie, there is something you can do. Yes. Send a telegram to mother right away. Go as soon as possible. All right, I'll take care of it. Oh, May. No, Joe. Got to get upstairs. Yes. Mommy. Have you got the ice? It took a long time to break in. There, give it to me. Aren't they here yet? Oh, the train should have been here a half hour ago. I guess the snow delayed them. Oh, they'd better hurry. Mommy. Mommy. Mommy will be here in a moment, darling. Yeah. There, doesn't that feel good? Mommy. God, make them hurry. Please make them hurry. Oh, Mommy. Oh, Mommy. Oh, she's been calling for you. Oh, praise be the little Lord, Mommy. Just a It's all right now, darling. Mommy's here. Go to sleep now, precious. Mommy's here. Mommy. 
Everything's all right now, darling. All's well, baby. to look at our program again. Best time to dry your clothes, huh? Now there's something new, drying your clothes in a rainstorm. New, but wonderfully true. I'm going to show you how you can actually dry your clothes days or nights when it's raining or snowing. And there's the answer. The Westinghouse electric clothes dryer that dries your clothes perfectly inside the house. Just think, in any weather, this dryer tumbles your clothes in clean, warm air, as gentle as a breeze in June. And it's so wonderfully easy, too. You just slip the clothes in, set the dial, and start it. Now, this model, this 230 volt model, has the exclusive new Westinghouse dry dial. There is no timer, you just set this dial for dry or damp, and automatically you get the exact dryness you select. Bone dry for storage, or the degree of dampness you want for ironing. Only the Westinghouse dryer has this great new feature. And it does such a beautiful drying job. You really have to see it to believe it. For instance, here are six towels that were dried outside on a clothesline. And here are six of the identical towels dried in a Westinghouse clothes dryer. They're so much fatter and softer and thirstier. The difference is really amazing. It's no wonder that the Westinghouse is the most popular clothes dryer in America. Everything about it is so, well, when you own one, you'll wonder how you ever did without it. So when the weather is nice, don't waste it hanging up your clothes because you can dry your clothes in any weather automatically and dry them better in the Westinghouse dryer. Remember, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. We return now to Westinghouse Studio One and Little Women. It's a lovely warm day. It'll do Beth good to get out in the air for a while. Yes, but she'll need this blanket, I think. She's not strong yet. No, it'll be a long time before she gets her strength back. Is Joe bringing her out? Mm-hmm. Oh, it is a lovely day. Sometimes it would almost seem easier if it rained, wouldn't it? What would seem easier? You don't have to pretend with me, dear. You love John very much, don't you? I don't know, Mommy. It's hard to tell with someone away. Mm. Wasn't easy sending for me instead of John, was it? Oh, Mommy, there was never any such thought in my mind. It was just a question of best living or not. I know, darling, I know. I was in love once, too. Oh, Mommy, you make me feel so ashamed. Here comes the princess to take the air. Oh, are you warming up? Oh, yes, of course. Oh, I have a beautiful place for you. <laughs> Careful. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, Marmy, I was beginning to think I'd never see the garden again. Nothing's changed, has it? No. Oh, it's so good to be here with all of you. I feel so I'm going to cry. Oh, go ahead. Weep yourself a little weep. It'll do you good. Oh, Joe, I'm not serious. I'm just happy. Uh, Marmy, Joe, Laurie's here. Oh, what is that, such tremendous news? Nobody says he has a surprise. A tremendous surprise. I don't believe a word of it. That's just Laurie being tiresome. Tiresome indeed. You'll eat those words, Miss Josephine. Oh, not believing, <laughs> Laurie. Oh, Beth, you're up and out. It's almost as nice to see as what I have. Stop it. You're just tantalizing. What is it, Laurie? I just know it's something completely silly. He's such a baby. <laughs> Oh, oh, father! Oh, what a, oh, what a surprise! Why didn't we let him know he was coming? Yeah, I oh, what a surprise! We even have Beth here to welcome you. Oh, Beth, Beth. Father, I'm not 
dreaming, am no, I? No, my darling, you're not dreaming, and neither am I, God be praised. Sit down, dear, you must be terribly tired. I am a little tired, but it's so good to be home, I scarcely notice. Now, let me look at you. Amy, Amy, how you've grown. And, and Joe, how's our famous authoress? Oh, Father, I haven't written a word in months. Well, we'll change that first mm. thing, Joe. And Meg. Oh, Meg, you're no longer a child. You're quite a young lady. Why didn't you let us know, Well, dear? I was about to write, dear, when the hospital let me go last Friday, and then John and Laurie got together and decided it would be a lot more exciting to surprise you. <laughs> so Laurie met us at the station, and here we are. We? Certainly. I couldn't travel alone. I'm not well enough for that yet, Meg. Father, did John come with you? Naturally. Oh, you're not being kind. Where is he? He didn't want to disturb the homecoming. I have an idea, Meg. If you go into the parlor, you'll find him waiting there. Oh, Papa! <laughs> Run along, you little goose. That's what you want to do, isn't it? Now, Beth, dear, you and I must work hard at getting well together. It will go faster now, I think. John. Meg, I was afraid I wouldn't know you. Have I changed so much? Yes. Oh. For the better. I... I feel ridiculously shy. I... I can't think of a thing to say. We'll have lots of time now. All the way up in the train, I'd planned how it would be and what I'd say. I knew it almost by heart. Is it so different? Very. I had a long speech prepared, all, all about enduring devotion. I... I was going to ask you how long you'd be willing to wait. I'd be willing to wait. The rest doesn't really matter. No. You should be with your family now. We should. Very well. We. <laughs> Good afternoon. Dinner will be served in a few moments. Good. Good. Well. Good to find you home for a change. Where's Mr. Brooke? He went upstairs about an hour ago, said he had some work to do. Where have you been, Grandpa? Been over to Lawrence, see the manager of the mill there. He's agreed to take John off. <laughs> That's the best news he's had in a long time. Shall I get him down? I see no reason why not. Grandpa, sometimes you can be nicer than expected. Nonsense. I want no thanks from you. In the first place, I wouldn't do as much for you. You don't deserve it. Oh, there you are. Just come oh, again. Come in, come in, come in. Why didn't you arrive, sir? Is there something you wanted to say to me? It won't take long. I've secured a position for you in one of our mills. It should be enough to make you independent, and it might mean a great deal more later on. I see. Well, that's very kind of you, sir. Only... Is that all you've got to say? I'm sorry. I don't mean to appear ungrateful, sir. But I've given the matter a great deal of thought, and I don't think that I should accept. What? Explain yourself a little further, Mr. Brook. I know what it would mean to be independent. I know that the immediate advantages are tremendous. But over a longer period of time, I also know that I should resent the dependence I'd feel on you. I'm afraid, therefore, that I shall have to refuse, sir, which does not mean that I'm ungrateful. You fool, you. Good. I agree with your decision. In the end, I'm sure you'll not regret it. I hope not, sir. But you may not be able to get married now. I know that, too. Well, I don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. That's what makes me sure it's a good decision. It's getting chilly. I think I'll go inside. You want me to help? Oh, no. I'm strong enough for that. Hello, Meg. <laughs> Hello, Johnny. Hello. Hello, where's John? He went downtown to see someone. He said he'd drop in before supper. Amy just rushed in with the news that Aunt March is on her way. She isn't staying for supper, is she? I suppose I should say I hope so. Well, I don't. It was going to be a nice evening with all of us together for a change. Meg, dear. Aunt March is on her way out. She wants to talk to me. Thank you, Mommy. Hello, Aunt March. Won't you come out? I'm very glad to see you. Are you indeed? You! Be off with you. I want to have a word in private with Meg, if you don't mind. I was just leaving, Aunt March. Aunt March, won't you sit down? Now, oh. what have you got to say for yourself? I don't understand. Don't pretend with me. Why 
have I been kept in the dark about this nonsense? You mean my engagement to John Brooke? That's precisely what I mean. Marmy and Papa thought it would be better if we didn't announce it until John was in a better... in a better position financially than at present. And when will that be, pray? Well, he... he's trying to work something out now. And without any security, whatever, he had the effrontery to ask you to marry him? He asked me to marry him, yes. I trust you refused him. I did not. I love John Brooke, and I'm going to marry him. That, of course, is for you to decide. But you may as well know that if you do such a thing, not a penny will you get from me, not a cent. When you've tried love in a cottage and found it to be a failure, don't come back to me for help. I'll never come back to you, Aunt March. Good for you, Meg. So, you also listen in to private conversations. Let me tell you, young man, if you marry my niece, I shall disown her. That is your decision to make. It will not delay our marriage one day, however. So? I have this afternoon obtained a position with a firm in Boston. We are no longer forced to beg. Oh, John! It does not represent a great deal of money, but it will be sufficient for us to start. It may mean a few sacrifices to begin with, Meg. I shall not mind. Very well. If you choose to disregard my warnings, Margaret, you must take the consequences. Good afternoon. Goodness. What have we done? I think that we've been a little reckless. But I don't mind. Do you? No. Supper's ready. <laughs> oh, you were listening. <laughs> Certainly, and we all approve. I could never get along with that March, John, so I see, see no reason why you should. <laughs> <laughs> come in, come in. building a skyscraper, driving your car, writing a letter, or just threading a needle, you're using steel. Nowadays, our very existence depends on steel. Westinghouse helps to meet ever-growing demands for this critical metal with a sureness that is part and parcel of Westinghouse products. For instance, thanks to the speed and sureness of powerful Westinghouse marine turbines that turn the propellers, Ships on the Great Lakes carrying precious ore for making steel get in two extra round trips a season. Two extra round trips with ore for steel before winter and ice close down all shipping on the Great Lakes. These huge unloaders scooping 20 tons at a bite play their part too in the race against winter. Westinghouse electric motors supply power to unload a 15,000 ton boat in a mere four hours. Whether it's the marine turbine to turn a ship's propeller or the electric motor to turn your laundromat, for home or business, farm or factory, you can be sure if it's Westinghouse. and saying goodnight for Westinghouse, makers of more than 40 million products for the American home. We hope you'll be with us again next week. Meanwhile, stop in, see the new Westinghouse television set with a giant 20-inch screen. And ask your Westinghouse dealer to show you the wonderful Westinghouse dryer that dries your clothes in any weather. And now until next week, good night. <laughs> <laughs>